So in this reaction, we have to take the conjugated diene and react it with chlorine. The carbon tetrachloride is inert, so it does not participate in the reaction. We have to predict two types of products, the 1-2 addition as well as the 1-4 addition, as well as keeping track of stereochemistry. So a lot going on. We will attack the 1-2 addition product first. So here we have our conjugated diene. Notice it's a symmetrical conjugated diene, so which of the two double bonds we use in the attack doesn't matter. We will select the first double bond here. We'll highlight the pi bond in red, and that is to emphasize that these pi electrons will actually come out and attack one of the chlorines, while simultaneously the bond between the chlorines will break. So we form this intermediate. Now you'll notice you could theoretically place the chlorine in one of two positions. You could place the chlorine here, and by doing so you would put positive charge at this carbon, or vice versa. You could put the chlorine here, and then the positive charge would go there. Well, it turns out that the former option in which we place the chlorine at this carbon is the more stable option, because by putting the positive charge at this carbon, we end up forming a resonance stabilized cation. And we will look at that resonance stabilization later on in the question. So make sure that you put the chlorine at this carbon right here, and then the positive charge goes on the carbon adjacent to it. We have also formed a chloride ion which now has uh, four lone pairs to it and a negative charge. And so that would be step one of this reaction. Now we can envision that because this chloride ion is negative, it would certainly be willing, so to speak, to react with this positive carbocation over here. Of course, negative attracts to positive, and that's in fact exactly what happens. So in the next step, we're going to end up with the following product. We have the first chlorine that added located at this carbon, and now we have the other chlorine added at this carbon. And indeed, this is what we call 1-2 addition. It's because the first chlorine added at this carbon and the next chlorine added at the adjacent carbon. So this is what we mean by 1-2 addition. But the question also told us to pay attention to stereochemistry. Now, if you look carefully at what we have labeled carbon number two, you will notice that that carbon is actually a chiral carbon. Now you might recall from organic one that a chiral carbon is a carbon that is bonded to four different groups. And what we'll do is we'll make sure that that carbon is indeed bonded to four different groups. So let's study that more carefully. We know that there is the chlorine, so that would be one group. We know that there is a hydrogen coming off of that carbon, so that would be another group. Then we have the group that contains the double bond over here. And then finally we have the group that contains the other chlorine. So we have four different colors. I don't know why that did not show up in yellow over here. There we go. That seems to be blinking at me. But anyways, there are four different groups right there. And indeed, carbon number two is therefore a chiral carbon. So why does that matter? Well, the fact that we formed a chiral carbon would tell us that two stereoisomers will result. We're going to get both the R and the S. So in your homework system, it's not going to be sufficient to draw this into the position where it says the 1-2 addition product. You're actually going to have to draw two different 1-2 products. Let's take a look at those. So we have gone ahead and have drawn the two different stereoisomers. This is still 1-2 addition, recall. Now notice that at carbon 2, we placed the chlorine on a wedged bond, suggesting that it is projecting out of the computer screen towards us. And then in the other product, we have placed the chlorine at carbon number 2 on a dashed bond, which shows us that it's projecting away or into the computer screen. Again, you have to draw both of those to account for the stereochemistry because carbon number 2 is a chiral carbon. And any reaction that begins with a carbon, if you go back here, carbon number two was achiral, and then at the end of the reaction, carbon number two was chiral, and therefore, you'll get both stereoisomers. So make sure you include both of those for the 1-2 addition. We will go back, after circling these two for 1-2 addition, and examine the 1-4 addition. Now for the 1-4 addition, we're going to have the same first initial step. So what we'll do is just basically copy this and paste it below. And this will help us understand the 1,4 addition. Now we claimed earlier that the reason we put the positive charge at that carbon right there is because it forms a resonance stabilized cation. Let's take a look at that resonance structure. And to do that, we take the neighboring pi bond and we basically swing it over here, almost like a door swinging on its hinge. 
And often with resonance structures, they'll use a little double-headed arrow to signify that we're drawing resonance structures. So by swinging that double bond, so to speak, over, we're going to place it right there. Now we still have that chlorine that had added originally. Now the positive charge shifts over to this carbon right here. Let's also recall that there was the chloride ion that had been formed during step one. That was the ion that had the negative charge. Now what we can draw is that chloride ion attacking this positive carbon right here. So we'll draw the arrow showing the chloride attacking at that position. And by doing that, <clears throat> pardon me, we will see that we have a different product. We're going to have the chlorine, the second chlorine added at this carbon. The first chlorine is still situated here. And if you study this carefully, you now have what they call the 1,4 addition product. This could be called carbon number one because that's the carbon to which the first chlorine bonded. This would be two, this would be three, and then lo and behold over here is carbon number four where the second chlorine had added. So this is your 1,4 product. This will be the answer to the little answer box that you have to put into your homework system. You, for those who are concerned about it, will notice that the double bond that we have drawn is actually what we call the E isomer. It is theoretically possible, by the way, that the Z isomer would form. So the Z isomer would look something like this. We would still have the double bond here, but rather than putting this bulky group in this position up here, it could theoretically be placed in this position down here, where you have your chlorine right there, and then this chlorine right here. So this would be the Z isomer. However, this is actually going to be a relatively minor product. And the reason it's minor is because these bulky groups here and here would sterically interfere with one another. The electron clouds of all the atoms would actually repel one another, and that would cause this product to be very unlikely to be formed in any great quantity. So don't draw that as part of your 1,4 addition product because that is a minor product. We only wanted the major. So in summary, you have one answer to the 1,4 product and then you had the two answers to the one-two product.